Hi, my name is Lorraine Fesk. I work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory for the California Institute of Technology. And I'm going to talk to you about Venus design reference missions that were developed that would be enabled with autonomy. The, uh, the design re reference missions came about as a result of a workshop in 2018 hosted by the Science Mission Directorate within NASA. There were a number of breakout sessions for this at this autonomy workshop that continued beyond the workshop as these groups worked on design reference missions for each one of these eight topics, um, seven topics below. And the one I will discuss is Venus. On that team were um, these people listed here, Pat, Pat Peachum, Darby Dyer, Gary Hunter, Jim Cutts, Michelle Chen, Ian Graveseth, Rebecca Faust, and myself from across NASA industry and academia. So we were looking at Venus for one reason, it's the very interesting, um, interesting planet. It's one of the four terrestrial planets in the solar system. And it is often described as Earth's twin or sister. As you can see in this, in this picture, they're very similar in size. Uh, uh, the left picture is of, the, of Venus, the right picture is of, of Earth. And, and the left, is, left image of, of Venus is cut in half with the left side being a radar image. So you can see through the clouds from, taken by the Magellan spacecraft and the right side is an optical image of the clouds from the Galileo spacecraft. So even though they are very similar, Earth and Venus, um, their conditions are not similar at all. Uh, Venus has the distinction of being the hottest planet in the solar system. And that mostly comes about because of its thick atmosphere. Um, on the surface, uh, it is about 93 bars of pressure, um, 460 degrees Celsius at the surface if you increase your altitude to about 55 kilometers. There are more, much more, um, uh, much more Earth-like conditions with one bar of pressure and about 40 degrees Celsius. Um, the chemical composition of Venus's atmosphere is also very harsh compared to Earth's. But scientists have a number of questions that they would like answered about Venus. Um, for example, Venus's early evolution, including possible habitability, and what were its evolutionary plan, paths? Um, how did it diverge so greatly away from, from Earth's current conditions? What are the atmospheric dynamics, the composition and climate history on Venus? And how are these physical processes, how do they interact to shape the modern surface of Venus? And, and a number of studies have been performed on, on what would be the best um, assets, space assets to send to Venus in order to answer these questions. So as a result of this workshop, we had um, our Venus team pulled together and we came up with two DRMs, two design ref reference missions. The first one, more of a near term from 2023 to 2032. And we coined this first DRM, Survive, Detect, Communicate. It consists of, as you can see in this picture, an orbiter uh, with a number of other assets. The larger capable orbiter would be um, communicating back to Earth. Um, the small spacecraft uh, would be interacting. The aerial, it also consists of an aerial vehicle that has drop sons and a lander system. So we felt that with this small suite of, of, of assets, we could characterize Venus's interior surface and atmosphere while demonstrating increasing autonomy. So the role for each of these assets would be that the orbiter and the small spacecraft would acquire gravity data, topography data through radar and spectral imaging data um, to constrain the landing site and create a geological map. The aerial vehicle would test control and flight altitude mobility of an aerial vehicle in the atmosphere 
around 50 to 60 kilometers altitude and examine um, ultraviolet absorber. The drop sons would acquire data on pressure, temperature, isotopic species, chemistry, and wind velocity in, as, as it's descending through the atmosphere. And then the lander system would detect rock types, mineralogy, would analyze the atmosphere, obtain images, and test drilling. So why do we need autonomy? Well, there's significant aspects of Venus exploration are challenged by limited lifetime or the availability for human in the loop interactions during the mission. Um, what we're calling machine-based intelligence can optimize the science return by performing operations independent of humans. Um, that can, this autonomy can vary from simple automation where we might have pre-scripted sequences um, to increasingly autonomous capabilities with the ability to determine its situation, make decisions, and respond robustly to unexpected events. Increasing the autonomy would be emission enabling. The, uh, the harsh environmental constraints limit the operating lifetime of any electronics that we put on Venus. And we're also seeing the need for rapid response times to coordinate among the assets and, and, and handle situations as they occur in situ. And we can't joystick these from the ground. So by injecting autonomous elements into the mission concept, um, we will potentially um, increase the cost, but we will also potentially reduce the risk of the asset since it can take care of itself once it's in situ. So some of the technologies that we're looking at needing for this first DRM included networking among the assets, performing autonomous navigation, how to measure altitude in these thick atmospheres, sorry, measure attitude in these thick atmospheres, um, system level autonomy to allow a spacecraft to perform science activities without human operators, to assess its own health, um, achieve situational awareness, plan and schedule its activities, manage its resources, respond to opportunistic science and robustly handle unplanned events. We are expecting degradations to occur in this harsh environment. Um, we're looking in this DRM to have at least one vehicle with a highly capable, high bandwidth, high speed computer. Um, and we also would need long lived electronics and sensors that can operate in these harsh conditions or a long lived cooling system that can maintain the electronics in a more moderate temperature and pressure conditions. Okay, so that was DRM one, which is more near term. DRM two is looking a little further out, 2032 to 2043 time frame where we could maybe accomplish this. And this is a little more involved, as you can see in the diagram. We have a network of systems, uh, a networked system of autonomous multiple agents, including a, an orbiter, still with an orbiter, um, but a fleet of small spacecraft a number of aerial vehicles, each with drop sons, and a networked landing system, lander vehicles that can detect these seismic events. The orbiter would be able to detect volatile, volatiles from volcanically produced hotspots or seismic waves, um, while the aerial platform confirms the seismic event and releases drop sons into it to measure the chemistry of the volcanic plume. So why do we need autonomy here? Again, the harsh environment constraints um, cause short lifetime of the hard hardware. Plus we're looking to have rapid in situ responses to, to capture these transient events, whether they're volcanoes or, or Venus quakes. <clears throat> and that will require coordination and communication across the agents. So we can't operate it in real time from the ground. Um, by injecting autonomous elements into this mission concept, we will enable this new science. And we're also looking to develop fail operational algorithms, um, which should reduce risk. We won't drop into safe mode and lose precious time. We will imbue the systems with the capability to work around problems and recover and continue 
the science. So uh, the autonomy needs here include things like event detection, both of active volcano events and seismic events that'll produce subtle changes that should be detectable from the ground or from orbit and from various types of sensors. We also wanna know the rate and volatile content of the volcanic activity on Venus. And this could be accomplished autonomously by a network of landers and orbiters that detect event, respond to the event, send more assets to the event and collect more data about the event. This event, um, these event confirmations would, would include coordinated drop sons release, moving aerial vehicles over to drop, um, drop more instrumentation into the region that's having the event. Um, and this could be accomplished autonomously by a platform that circumnavigates Venus every few days to confirm these seismic events and release drop sons in the appropriate places. So these Venus DRMs really demand autonomy. And this includes um, the need, uh, the situations include constrained communications with Earth and among the assets at, at Venus, um, needing time critical decisions to be made because of wanting to respond to events, uh, transient events that occur like volcanoes. Um, and there's also a number of internally data heavy decision processes such as terrain relative nav navigation, onboard data analysis and processing between the assets. Um, the system architecture simplification would be um, a really appropriate uh, body of work to allow each of these assets to have independent decision making, and then situational complexity that exceeds the limits of, of human input, such as responding to these surface events and changing environmental conditions. These assets are moving very fast, 5,600 kilometers a day. So the critical autonomous technologies that we are looking at um, to enable these Venus design reference missions, um, both near-term and medium-term, we're aligning with uh, the, the NASA Autonomous Systems Capability Leadership Team Taxonomy, which has broken autonomy into four areas, situational and self-awareness, reasoning and acting, collaboration and interaction, and engineering and integrity. And, and the particular technologies within each of those areas include the list here, such as sensing and perception of the environment, estimating the state and monitoring the health of the asset, um, identifying trends and events, and doing performing mission planning and scheduling, working around problems as they occur, responding and replanning when events occur that you want to um, go explore, determining when faults occur and how to respond to them, learning and adapting, and then an architecture and a design that's appropriate for all of these capabilities. The supporting technologies that we see could enable these autonomy capabilities include a communications infrastructure at Venus and a navigation infrastructure for Venus um, that would enable these variable altitude uh, mobility systems to maneuver around the planet. Um, and then flight hardware and sensors that can operate on these balloons um, especially if they drop below that 55 kilometer altitude where the environment becomes more extreme. And then finally, multi-agent coordination, which would enable these assets to talk to one another and work together to achieve the science, the science that we're looking to achieve um, on these missions. So in conclusion, the findings of the DRM team for Venus were uh, that NASA should support these areas of technology development, including developing the algorithms and the models that would detect, diagnose, and recover from hardware degradation, since we are expecting degradation in, in Venus's harsh environment, developing sensors for the orbiters, the drop sons, the landers, and the aero vehicles, develop methods to communicate across these multiple platforms, 
um, demonstrate situational awareness and adaptability um, to enhance the survivability of, of, these, of these assets in this harsh environment. Develop system level autonomy algorithms so that these systems can achieve onboard planning and scheduling, smart execution and resource management on their own without ground in the loop. Develop multi-agent technology so that these assets can be um, coordinating their activities in, in, in performing science in concert, moving toward events as they occur. And finally, that NASA should continue and expand its support for programs such as Hot Tech, the Hot Tech program, fund technology maturation for aero vehicles and identify where joint sponsorship and dual use development can be leveraged to result in new mission capabilities. Thank you for your time.